Good afternoon, folks. Uh, my name is Mike Nelson. I'm going to be talking a little bit about bringing vCenter uh, into Azure Arc uh, with uh, PowerShell and PowerCLI. So to kick off, we're going to say I talked to ChatGPT, of course, like you're supposed to nowadays, and said, why would I want to do this? Why would I want to host my vCenter you know, in Microsoft Arc, in Azure Arc? Um, well, I came back with all this stuff. And I'm not really interested in all this stuff because it's just the stuff that you know people write in books and it doesn't make sense. So I asked the original OG of uh, GPT. And my deck just went crazy. <laughs> I asked the original, there he is. Not sure what happened there. Hey, whoa, whoa. whoa. I reclaim my time. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Something is driving the keyboard crazy. Here. You want this? Is it this? It's that. Okay. Uh, so, uh, talking to the original OG G OG GBT, um, and oh, here we go. So now I got to back up over all this. And pretty much they just came back and said, hey, why would you want to do this? Because we want everything inside of Azure. And VMware and Microsoft are best friends now. So you want to put it up there, right? Uh, this is what we're really looking at when you talk about putting vCenter inside of Azure Arc. You're looking at first down here at the management endpoint, your VMs. Okay, your vCenter server, resource pools, all that kind of fun stuff. Coming over here into the Kubernetes cluster, because that's what you're actually putting that vCenter into is a cluster. And that in, uh, uses something called a resource bridge. Resource bridge is like a gateway. Think of it as gateway. It's required in order to have that, that functionality. Now, down here, you're actually getting down to the point where you know, it's going to be inside of ARC. That means it's going to be manageable inside of Azure and inside of ARC. So you can manage the vCenter and you can manage the VMs that the vCenter has, okay? So there are some requirements here. You take a look at the requirements, there's a couple that I really wanna point out. The first one is, is that you need a bunch of IPv4 addresses. All right, now that's gonna be mainly the DHCP range that's gonna be on your on-prem, all right? Because you have to have that on-prem range in order for the resource bridge to work uh, up into ARC. Cluster resource pool. I'm not exactly sure why they give you this uh, requirement of 16 gig and four vCPUs because there's no such thing as a vCPU um, in in this uh, in the in the for the bridge. Um, I don't I don't quite get that. But you need a cluster pool. I've done it with eight gig, okay, and two vCPU. It's not a big deal. Azure, you need a subscription, and you need to make sure you have the AVS preview enabled, along with read. Uh, all inventory deploy update VM and permissions. Of course, for the demonstration, I used someone who had all the permissions. So these are the feature that are uh, registrations that are required for your Azure subscription. So you need to go through and you need to actually enter these, okay? You have the ability to do it through the UI. You can go into uh, the Azure Active Directory, you can go into preview and you can select these, but it's just easy to run it from the, the command line. So you're gonna run these commands. You're also gonna do these because you have to wait until they actually all are enabled. And then you can actually take a look and make sure you have Azure Arc for AVS uh, enabled. It's actually there. Once that's done, then you can actually build the resource bridge. Okay, this is really kind of important. You have to do this. So this is a demonstration. I'm gonna walk through the demonstration here. I'm looking at my AZ version. And when I look at the AZ version, I want to make sure I'm at the right version, the latest. I'm going to look at all my accounts. You want to make sure you're in the right Azure account before you do this. So I'm picking an Azure account that I am in. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this PowerShell script. Now, I'm going to open up the PowerShell script. You can see this script is created by Azure for you. You input a bunch of parameters. It will create this entire script for you, okay, to create the bridge. As you can see, it's going through and it creates the resource groups, names everything for you, takes care of all that. So here I go, I'm gonna actually run this script. It's a long script, it takes a while to run. So I sped it up a little bit. 
as you can see, it starts to ask questions right away. Are you behind a proxy? Okay, then it starts getting into, I want you to notice, it has to use 64-bit Python on whatever you're using to set this up. Just so you know, if it's not there, it's gonna install it. Same thing with Azure CLI. You have to make sure you have Azure CLI. If you don't have it, the script's gonna install it for you. From there, okay, it's actually gonna go. You can see I actually, you know, sped this up. It's gonna start cycling here in a second and going through everything that it's gonna build. Eventually, it's gonna to get to a point where it'll start asking you questions again, specifically around what is the IP or FQDN of your vCenter, okay, how to, uh, uh, credentials to access it, and what are the IPs that you're gonna give it. As you can see here, you need to log into, uh, confirm the login to Azure CLI, so Azure CLI can connect to your subscription up in, in Azure. I've already done this, so I'm gonna hit no here. Eventually, it's going to say N. There we go. And now it's going to go through, and it's going to start setting everything up. And it'll go through, and it'll explain everything, everything that it's doing. Now, of course, this is sped up, but you're going to be able to see this, and you're going to be able to take this as a record of what was created if you need that from a governance and security standpoint. Here, it's actually asking for the vCenter at QDN and the username. Once I input that, it's going to ask for the password. And from there, it's going to start looking at your actual inventory. Okay, where in the data center? What is the VM network that we need to be connected to? Then it's going to start asking for the appliance, the DHCP and the static IPs. This is all running through the script. This is all happening via PowerShell and PowerCLI. Once this is all done, it comes, it gets to the actual uh, IP information that's put in. The bridge, okay, this is the DNS resolution for the bridge. The bridge has to be able to resolve the vCenter, okay? It has to be resolvable by Azure. Azure has to know how to resolve to the bridge. That's why you're gonna have to have some kind of DNS entry or host entry or something to identify that bridge. This is where you actually start to give it the IP addresses for the uh, actual VM that's gonna be running the the uh, bridge itself. And then it's gonna ask you what uh, resource pool. You, vote, you created that resource pool in vCenter, it's reading it and saying what resource pool do you wanna put it in, and then the data store, and then the actual folder. You have to have it inside of a folder as well as part of the requirements. I just picked the discovered virtual machines folder. And then you give it the actual configuration for the appliance cluster. This is all spelled out in the documentation. I mean, it's very simple to follow. Um, they actually walk you through it step by step. And here we go, it's actually gonna build it. So you can see it's going through and building everything. It's, it's actually building the VM for the appliance. It's putting it up in ARC and putting the inside the cluster inside of vCenter so it can talk. And once the bridge is up and running, it's installing the cluster extension for Kubernetes. And then from there, I probably should have sped this up a little, little bit more. But um, from there, once it gets actually to the cluster extension, it should get ready to actually, there we go. It's gonna give you everything in JSON format, how it, how it actually you know, worked out with the, you know, how the extension was installed. Uh, good, good for record. Same thing there. All, again, all of this is, is uh, recordable. vCenter FQDN or IP, it's asking for it a second time. Because why? Because it spun it up, the uh, resource bridge up, and it has to reconnect. Okay, it doesn't cache that security information. It doesn't cache the username and password. Once we get the password in here, and got to confirm it, and then confirm the details. So this is actually just going to go through and it's going to confirm, it's going to take the script and say make sure everything was set up the way it was supposed to. It's going to show you that everything was set up the way it was supposed to. And then once it's actually up and running, come on. Here we go. 
So continue onboarding to complete the arc. You have to enable your resources, uh, view your vCenter resources in the Azure portal. This is where we would actually hop over to the portal and actually be able to see uh, the inside of here. Okay. We go into servers, Azure Arc. Under Arc servers, we actually have an option for VMware vCenters. And there's our Arc v server that we just built. Inside of here, you can see everything pretty much that you can see uh, inside of vCenter with limitations. I mean, you can see the virtual machines, resource pools, networks, data stores, so on and so forth. Now I'm connecting to the actual vCenter. There we go. Ooh, down to the wire. Come on. You get to the password in. Come on, here we go. Once we log into the vCenter, you're actually going to be able to see the appliance and be able to control it from there. So inside of DC, once you're in there in a cluster one, I think I have it. Uh, you actually has the AZ Arc pool. That's the actual pool for it, and the uh, the appliance is inside of that pool. It's going to launch a remote console, and you'll be able to see everything that you can do with a remote console. Um, but currently, I am out of time, I believe. How much time have I got? Okay. Uh, yeah, okay, okay. I didn't get the chicken, so I wasn't sure. Um, yeah, so you actually see in here that inside you'll be able to check everything out uh, from a Azure Arc standpoint. You can actually see the Kubernetes how the Kubernetes uh, probes are started, the servers are started, all that kind of fun stuff. So if you have any questions about this, I'll be around. Uh, I've got a couple more sessions here this, uh, today, and uh, feel free to stop up and ask. Thank you very much.